This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 103. In this episode, I will show you 47 new features in 15 different Google Apps. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about my future episodes. And now let me show you the new features. Let's start the episode with YouTube and here I'm going to show you six new changes. The first change is the redesigned mini player. Now when you play a video and then minimize it, you will see a much simpler design that doesn't include any buttons under the window, but they appear overlaying in the viewfinder. You only see the X and the pause and play buttons and nothing else. And the progress bar shows here at the bottom. For reference, here is how it looks on the S24 Ultra. This is the older design which takes a lot of space under the player, but it gives you more controls like the seek forward and backward buttons that are no longer showing in the new design. Google also updated the comments section with a new threaded design. So if you have any reply on the comment, you will see this line that goes to the reply and the reply text is now in black instead of blue like before. And this is how you can see the replies. The rest of the features I'm gonna show you are experimental, which are available to YouTube premium subscribers to try out right now. To access the new experimental features, you need to go to the profile page, then settings, then try experimental new features. And the first one we have is called high quality audio. This feature will allow you to listen to music on YouTube with the best audio quality. It says here, watch any eligible music video on YouTube and enjoy the benefit of higher quality audio, only available on iOS and Android, which means it's not available on the web. I didn't come across any video that supports this feature, but based on the graphical representation, it will be labeled in a way to let you know that you are currently listening to high quality audio. But if you came across one of these videos, please share the link in the comments to see how it works. The second one is the shorts picture in picture on iOS, which is something we already have on Android for a while. So if you want to experience this feature, you can turn on the toggle and try it on your iOS device. The third one is also related to shorts and iOS devices. It says premium users on iOS devices can now have recommended shorts automatically downloaded to their device. By the way, I have this feature on my Android phones for a while. And if you want to check the downloaded shorts, you need to go to the profile page and then downloads and you will see a new section for shorts. It says here 27 videos, tapping on it will immediately show you the downloaded ones. With the ability to tap on the ellipses to delete all of them at once. Last but not least is a feature called faster speeds, which will allow you to play videos up to 4x on mobile devices. And after activating the toggle, when I go to the settings menu, and then go to the playback speed. It's giving me up to 3x. So I'm not sure what are the requirements to reach the 4x, but it says here up to 4x, so you don't have to see 4x all the time. Next, we have Google Photos, and here I'm gonna show you six new changes. The first change is related to memories. So for example, when I open this one and then tap on share, I get this redesigned interface that I already covered before. But what's new here, when I try to share photos, I'm getting the redesigned share sheet of Google Photos. Unlike previously under the same exact scenario, I used to get the older share sheet, but now I'm getting a more consistent experience across the app. I also noticed that the trash folder got renamed to bin, but I only see this new change on the S25 Ultra and none of my Pixel phones got this change. So I'm not sure if this is how it works for non-Pixel devices or Google will rename the folder for everyone. The third change is when you go to on this device, you will no longer see the count of items under each folder if the backup is turned off. You will only see it when you have the backup turned on. And for reference, here is how it looks on the S25 Ultra. As you see, I don't have the backup turned on for all these items, but I still can see the count. Change number four is under the manage storage page that you can access from the profile menu. Now, when you try to go to any of these categories to clear some of the items to save space, you will get this new animation with a bar at the bottom to show you the total number of gigabytes. Change number five, when you try to use the reimagine feature on Pixel phones, the photos generated from this feature will now be labeled as edited with AI to join the rest of the features like the magic editor and the zoom enhance and so on. So now I'm generating a new image and when I tap on save a copy, when you go to the info pane of this photo, you will see that it has the AI info tag here at the bottom and it says edited with Google AI. 
Last but not least, Google Photos on the web got dark theme support. To access this feature, click the settings button at the top right corner and then expand appearance to choose between light, dark, or use system default. And this is how it looks in dark theme. Now let's talk about Gboard as it got some really cool new features. The first change is in the design. You will notice here that the top row buttons got slightly different icons and the menu button on the left lost the circular container around it and the squares are now much bigger and these are the rest of the icons on the left you will see a screenshot from the previous design to see the difference between the two but the most exciting change i want to show you is the new assistant voice typing floating bar once you tap on the microphone you will see those two arrows next to it tapping on it will convert into a floating bar that you can place at the top or the bottom of the screen like this and then you will get a menu button over here that will give you plenty of options to choose from. First, you can access the settings. You can show the voice commands if you are not familiar with the assistant voice typing. And then we have the show clipboard that appears as a floating window that you can also resize the way you want. Then we have the show translate, which is also a floating window, but it doesn't support resizing. Then we have the show emoji, Again, another floating window that you can resize. And then we have the show or switch to vertical toolbar. And this one will put the toolbar on the sides of the screen. But if you want to change it to a horizontal one, all you need to do is to drag it. And you will see here this overlay uh, placeholder. Once you release your finger, it will change into a horizontal one. And you can place it either at the top or the bottom like this. And you can also use the menu to switch between them. Then you will find the languages. You will also notice this floating carousel at the top with the suggested words that gives you haptic feedback when you reach the end of the list like this. And it only appears when you tap on the text box or any of the words you've typed. Then we have a button to switch back to the normal keyboard and it will save your preference. So for example, when I started the floating voice typing and then quit the keyboard open it again it will stay like this so it saves your last preference then we have an empty space that will show you a lot of information for example if you are not using the mic it will say pause once you tap on it it says listening in some cases it will suggest some of the assistant voice typing commands so let me show you an example delete undo clear so you get some suggestions over here. In some cases, you might see suggested emojis. So let me stop, clear everything, and then say the word camera, camera. So as you see, I'm getting some camera emojis here as suggestions. Then you get a delete button that will delete a word by word like this. And you can definitely pause the voice typing from here. The last thing I noticed is when you use it in a vertical orientation, it doesn't give you any of the suggestions you get with the horizontal one. Overall, this new feature makes the voice typing on Gboard the best by far when compared to any other keyboard I ever tried. So please let me know what do you think in the comments. Now let's talk about Gemini that got a lot of attention lately. So let's take a look at the new changes. First, when you open the app, it will immediately show you the keyboard to start typing, which is something that didn't exist before. Google also added a lot of new models to the Gemini Advanced and the free users. In my case, I got the 2.0 Flash, the stable version, which was in beta previously. And then we have the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental, Flash Thinking Experimental with apps, and it says reasoning across YouTube, Maps, and Search. And then we have 2.0 Pro Experimental. And when you switch to a free account like this one you will get the 2.0 flash stable the 2.0 flash thinking experimental and the flash thinking experimental with apps and then you get the 1.5 flash which is the previous model but the most exciting change is the ability to ask questions about whatever you see on the screen either it's a photo or a video when it comes to video, now you can talk to Gemini Live about YouTube videos and this feature is available on the Pixel 9 and the S25 models. So let me show you a quick example. When you trigger Gemini, you will see talk live about video. Tapping on it will take the video to Gemini to start okay, asking is, questions. Is there anything in particular you want to know? What's new in the lock screen of One UI 7? Okay, 
Here's a summary of the lock screen changes in One UI 7. First off, the layout's been cleaned up. The battery percentage So as you heard, the... it immediately gave me the answer about the video. And when it comes to photos, if you see a photo on the screen, you can attach it to Gemini using this new shortcut called Ask About Screen, which will do the same thing for you. But this one doesn't use Gemini Live. And when you use Gemini inside Gmail and open one of your email messages, then tap on the Gemini button. It will give you a new option here called list the next steps. Tapping on it will show you the suggested steps based on the message content. And this is how they look. Then we have this arrow next to the copy. Tapping on it will immediately start an email reply so you can send it to the person. And then you have the magic wand with another suggestion that when you swipe on, it will generate another message about something else inside the same email. And this is how it looks after generating. Then you will get some other options to change the style at the bottom. I also got this new text at the bottom every time I ask Gemini something. It says Gemini can make mistakes, so double check it. And lastly, as per 9to5 Google, the latest version of Imagine 3, the image to text model used in Gemini, can now generate photos of people in workspace apps, and these are the apps included. Now let's talk about Google Maps, and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change is related to One UI 7. Now Google Maps supports the now bar integration. So for example, if you are navigating somewhere and then you quit the app and close the picture in picture window, when you go to the lock screen, you will see that Google Maps is showing in the now bar and this is how it looks. When you tap on it, it will expand into a bigger card with the ability to exit the navigation from here. The second change is in the main map view. I got a tooltip recently talking about the square pins in the map, which are actually ads. When you tap on these square pins, this is what happens. You will get a banner here about an ad that you can see in the place listing. I also got this brand new floating shortcut that takes me to Google Lens every time I tap on something on the map. This is exactly the same feature, but it's now easier to access. Last but not least, when you go to Google Maps settings and then your vehicle, you will see a slightly redesigned menu, which is less cluttered. Here you can choose the engine type and based on the type, you might get a sub menu to choose the plugs and adapters. Now let's talk about the Google app and here I'm gonna show you eight new changes. I will start with circle to search as it got a lot of new changes that I really like. Starting with the haptics, we are back again to the same long haptic feedback while triggering circle to search, the same one we originally got with this feature. Instead of this small tab that Google used recently, and I'm glad that they reverted back to the original one. Not only this, but the animation and the bar at the bottom match my wallpaper colors because I'm using a green wallpaper so you can see a green accent here and in the animation but when I open something else like this one you will see totally different colors for the animation and the bar that also got this container around it which make things look a lot cleaner than before not only this but when you try to select something on the screen like this the haptic feedback is also better and the glow under my finger is also more visible than before. The glow around this box, as you see here, is more intense now with this new design so you can clearly see it. I really like all the decisions Google made here when it comes to the circle search design as it feels much better when you use it. Another cool feature they added is the one tap action buttons that appear if you have phone numbers, emails, or links on the screen. So let me show you a quick example. When I trigger circle to search, you will see a tooltip that looks like an email envelope. Tapping on it will immediately take me to the mail app. Sometimes it picks the phone numbers, sometimes it picks the email, so it's not consistent. But if you want to pick the phone number, you can tap on it anyways. But this new feature will give you a quick shortcut to access some of the information on the screen. Now let's talk about the Google app itself and I will start with the search widget. So let me add it to the home screen like this. And when I tap on the edit button, I got this brand new option called shortcuts. Tapping on it will allow you to add shortcuts to the search bar. We have here translate, song search, weather, camera, or translate camera, sports, dictionary, homework, and finance. So let's see how many we can add. You can add one extra shortcut on top of what's already available. So you can choose whatever you want and then 
This is how it looks at the end. Let's go back to the home screen. And as you see, now I have the song search available along with the mic and Google Lens. I hope if Google add the same customization options of this widget to the prominent search bar we have on Pixel phones. Why I cannot give it a different color, transparency, and add an extra shortcut, same as this one, because that looks very redundant to me. It's exactly the same thing, but it has a different color. So if we can customize this bar at the bottom the same way like this, it will be definitely much better. Google app also got a small design tweak. When you switch to the dark theme, you will see that the search bar has a blue accent color instead of gray, and that makes it pop a little bit more. If you made it to this point of the video, you are definitely interested in Google Apps. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about my future episodes and also support the channel for more. And when it comes to the wallpapers I use, if you like any of them, they are now part of the Wallpapers by In-Depth Thick Reviews app that you will find its Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to the new features. Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change and I have plenty of them, starting with YouTube Music, in the now playing screen, when you double tap on the album art, it will like the song. The live captions on Pixel phones got a brand new background transparency toggle. When you turn it on, it will make it transparent. The phone app got new filters under the recent screen that will allow you to filter your list by missed calls, contacts, non-spam, or spam. The Pixel Weather app will now give you the option to change all the units without the need to change your regional preferences under the phone settings. Starting with the temperature, you can choose one of these options. And under weather units, you have one for the precipitation, one for the wind, one for the biometric pressure, and finally the visibility. Or you can tap the use default button, which will set it to your phone's settings. Google Calendar will now give you the option to hide certain holidays by tapping on them and then tap the ellipses and you will find an option called hide this holiday. The emergency dialer on Pixel phones that you can access from the unlocking keypad got updated with a brand new design and here's how it used to look. The name and the profile picture are now showing at the top left corner with bigger text and the emergency info is no longer a button but a slider. In Gmail, when you open a message and then tap on the ellipses at the top right corner, you will see a redesigned menu with categorization. For reference, here is how it used to look before the update. And you will see here that these three options are grouped together, which makes more sense. Then we have the snooze, add to tasks in the same group. Then we have mute, print, help and feedback. And the report spam button is now in red. And all the items got their own relevant icons which didn't exist before, and the menu itself is now much shorter. In Google Messages, the red receipts got this new white background when the other person reads the message, and this is what happens when you send a new one. As you see, it will start with an outline and then turns into a white background. In Google Play Store, when you go to the profile menu and then play protect, then tap the gear button, the scan apps with play protect toggle becomes grayed out when you start a phone call. So once I start this phone call and then get back to Google Play Store like this, you will see that the option is grayed out for security reasons. So these are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about my future episodes. And if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps, please reach me out on social media or let me know about them in the comments below. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.